Hello everybody, welcome to today's episode. So I'm going to be doing Star Cruiser Tier 3. So all of my favorite old Star Cruisers, or at least all the ones that most of you might own, some and one and some and a few that you might not even know exist. Right, so just some of the good Star Cruisers of Star Wars that I might miss. I'll miss out things like I missed out the victory because that is just as called book X as Advent Adventor. And I'll be going I'll be going into that later, okay? So the first ship, of course, well the worst ship is the Interdictor class. So you Star Wars geeks out there may be Alan, hey war history, that's not right. These ships pull ships out of hyperspace. Well, yeah, you have a point. But those are a problem. The gravity wells could be hijacked, turning this into that. Which, yeah, simply attract. This is from the Rebel episode Stealth Strike. A, a sneak strike? I can't remember. One of those names. Where. Where, where the crew of a CR-90, the one in the corner right there, are captured by the interdictor, the prototype interdictor at the time. And then the, the rebels end up escaping and, and reprogramming the hyperdrive. So, no, hy not hyperdrive, sorry, I think it's something else. Uh, hyperdrive, uh, gravity, gravity. Gravity things, and uh, gravity, what's called the thing that the gravity wells, so that they, so they end up pulling into Aquamines class light cruisers, escorting it, and blow it up. So very bad ship indeed. Next one is next three ships. I I couldn't just see in D tier because from E tier. To be tier, there's nothing in between those because all star cruisers are either interdictor level bad that I don't know about or B to S or B to A. Then there's one that's past A and S. Right, so the Archimedes class I just talked about the profundity and the and the and the what are they again? Just just wait, then the I, I really have problems with this. Let me see you. Not here. Just wait. Just wait a sec. Munificent class star frigates. And by the way, they were sad star frigates, but they're really medium cruisers. They're grossly overpowered for its for their size, and that's a line from the from the Star Wars Encyclopedia of Star Fighters and our vehicles. And there was a lot of them. And they were fast and could do quite a lot. They were even faster than the resistance transport. So it's very bad just full stop. But still, it's faster than that. Okay, so it's just not good. Just, okay, just great. Sorry, not good, great, it's great. Sorry, glad we stopped. It's even faster than fr actual frigates. <laughs> The Delta, the Pelta class, m the medical frigates. Phew, strange. Anyway, so these ships could only, they only need 200 crew to operate, but they could hold a lot of vessels. Because a lot of, not no vessels, sorry. I got, they could also hold a lot of dry starfighters, but they also held overpowered amount of. Just wait, just wait. Overpowered amount of fighters. Joint star fighters may not be good individually, but they're overpowered in teams, and they can patrol, and they can, and they can do, st and they can. Wait, just wait. They can, they can, they can do a lot of crazier maneuvers, like flipping upside down, a lot easier without you know getting sick or you know getting killed by G forces. Oh, and the profoundity. 
I'm not putting it above, I'm not putting it up anymore because the ship, the profanity, was not as powerful as the other MC class star cruiser. Right. Now we have the Providence, Venator, and Home One, an MCAT. Well, let's start with the Providence and the Venator fruits instead of because they're they're the opposite of each other. The Providence, if you only came down to a gun duel, it would win because it was overpowered. <laughs> it had a lot of guns. The Providence class were overpowered. There, there's a cruiser variety and a dreadnought variety. Variety. The Invisible Hand was a cruiser variant. Or I'm not sure. Maybe it was a cruiser variant. Wait, okay, there's a cruiser variant. It's still overpowered. Right, and then my guess is and droid starfighters as always. And then the highest amount of carrier power, well maybe okay, maybe second highest highest carrier power on this list, the Venator. I said it was bad in my star destroyer tier tree because it's not a star destroyer. It is a cruiser, heavy cruiser, overpowered, carry hundred star fighters. Actually, four hundred and twenty. And that's a lot of starfighters. So yeah. And it was very fast, very nimble, had a class one hyperdrive, and lots of other really cool things. Yeah. yeah. Oh it also had two bridges, so if you hit one, it I think I believe the power could be transferred to the other I believe the controls could be transferred to the other. I'm not sure. Probably though. Anyway, so, yeah, lot of, love, just lots of stuff. Also the humongous hangar deck where that red strip is. And then the famous home one. The famous, famous Admiral Ackbar's command ship where, where, where he commands the Battle of Endor. The ship can actually split into multiple pieces. No one knows that, but it can be split. Those little bumpy bits on the hull can actually get us in off as individual shuttles. They're not good at their job, but they can do it. So yeah, the main shuttle is also, I believe, with the bridges. So yeah. And the flat, the best ship in this, in the, in the best cruiser in Star Wars is, drum roll please, the malevolence and her sister ships of the sub J Eater class heavy cruisers. Okay, where should I start? They are nearly five kilometers long. They are a 500 turbo acres. They have a gigantic ion cannon on the starboard and port side, which can destroy fleets of Venators. Three actually. Plokin's feet of three Venators, all knocked out by this one ship. And, I may also say, <laughs> they're overpowered. I mean, it took Kamikaze unit into a moon to destroy it. And, and even after its iron cannon was knocked out, it couldn't be destroyed because of the sheer, sheer bulk. Three Venators on o in Obi Wan Kenobi's fleet were trying to blow up, and they were just bink, 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 until Anakin and Obi Wan boarded the vet, boarded the ship to save Padme, which is just, just if you understand your Star Wars, you'll know what this is. And Anakin reverts the computer so that when they try to hyper jump, hyperspace jump. They, they it ends up jumping, ends up turning it and bunning it into a star. That was the only way the invisible hand, that was the only way the malevolence was destroyed. So I got the invisible hand and malevolence mixed up. The malevolence is on one page and the invisible hand is on the other. 
on the same page, on the same to look at the pages right beside each other and, and they're I'm looking at both of them. Okay, so just just in short, the malevolence could do anything it felt like. Very big problem with its command tower, but eh, it's not as bad as I don't know, like less than okay, it's not as bad as some other ships. <laughs> Uh, the profundity, see, because look at that. Look at the profundity bridge. It's just hanging off the bottom of the ship. No, look. Star Destroyers had overexposed bridges, but that's like sticking your heart, taking your heart and sticking it on a pole that's, a, that's only a centimeter thick and 30 meters long. Yeah, you're gonna get hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna end up good. Sorry for that little example, I just kinda th couldn't think of anything better than that. So, uh, hopefully you will enjoy today's episode. I think you'll be happy with it. And remember, was that, sorry, that's just that. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell button for more of these great videos. And, as always, I shall see you next time.